Okay, first of all, I just need to check who actually read the description to this talk before you signed up. Great, How, who didn't? I hate Agile, yeah, wow, okay. Uh, I just want to know also, are there any Agile coaches, Scrum Masters, Lean Specialists, Lean Leaders, Agile Gurus? Hand up, hand up, okay, great. Anyone from the dark side? Traditional product managers? You're also welcome. Anyone um, not working with software? Great. Uh, HR, finance, marketing? Some hardware. Wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now I have to change. Um, thank you. All welcome. So now I know a little bit about you, and maybe you want to know something about me. My name is Roger Carlson. I work at a company called One Agency. But I also have one wife, two kids, and three hobbies. And this is what I look like, according to some of my colleagues. Um, yes, I'm pretty handsome. I think so. Uh, and sometimes I'm called Agile coach, sometimes I'm called Scrum Master, sometimes I'm called team leader, sometimes, or actually one time I was called team master. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. But my passion is how to work efficiently together. Okay, why are we here today? Well, for those of you who read the description, there were a couple of questions, these four. And I'm thinking, if I answer those, that's the least thing I can do to make you satisfied, okay? So that's my definition of done, my least level. If I do more, that's even better. So how do you convince someone from hating a mindset to actually try it? That is based on my dear colleague, the French, manager who yelled at me in the phone or in the conference conference phone i hate agile and i was oh, okay uh, i just said maybe we should try something new here but maybe not agile three months later we started our first sprint how did we do that i will show you and why do teams and companies fail when they try to implement a new way of working at least from my experience, where I come from. I would try to show that. And when is it really good time to work Agile and when is it not? That we come is actually a recipe for success. I guess that's why you're here, right? Okay, but first we will have an exercise. So please stand up. Everybody stand up. And now you need to team up. Two and two. If you're free, that's fine. But do it two and two. And then you will just stand back to back with your body. Uh, no contact, no contact, no contact, no, no contact. Back to back. The person with the shortest hair will now change five things in your appearance. That could be, you know, rolling up the sleeves remove a shoe, move the watch to the other arm, something you can pick yourself, but you have to change five things. When you're done, you turn around and the other person or persons will try to guess which changes you did. When you're done, you sit down, okay? Okay, questions? No, let's start. Person with shortest hair, Change five things. <laughs> it could be anything. Small details, big things.
And when you're done, you can sit down. When you're done, you can sit down. Okay, when you're down you can when you're done you can sit down again. Okay, thank you. Was it difficult? Difficult? Okay. So what was the purpose of this exercise? Yes. Sounds great, but it's wrong. Okay. Good, but it's wrong. But it's wrong. Uh, may I just ask you, what were you doing now? Yeah, but what were you doing with your shoes just a moment ago? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just want to ask you. And uh, over here, what were you doing? Yeah, okay. No, it's wrong. Actually, it's wrong. Did you? I didn't. Didn't you have your button? Like, and then you open it again. Okay. Okay. So what was the purpose? I asked you to do five changes, and now you're changing back. <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to do that. I did tell you, do five changes. Not temporary ones, five changes. And now you're turning back. This was five changes. I was pretty kind because I just tell you can pick any changes you want. I didn't decide. You have to roll up your sleeves. You have to, you know, you could pick, pick yourself. But I didn't give you a purpose. I didn't tell you why we're doing these changes. Five changes, is that quite difficult? If we should implement something we call Scrum, that's 10 changes. Doing 10 changes without a purpose, and we will probably fail. That's really difficult, actually. But it happens a lot. Try implement something, don't really understand why. Moving back to the things you did before. So, like people go on a diet. Sometimes we think changes are just a time bound exercise. I just need to eat less and exercise more for now. But if we want to stay with the change, we need to live with it forever, for the rest of our lives. The change has to go into the company's core, into its people. It needs to be embodied with the company's leaders. So they can lead us through the change, supporting us. Adapting a new way of working is a lifetime commitment. It's not just an aggressive diet. So why do we need to change? Well, we want to improve, right? Because we want to be better today than we were six months ago. But we also want to be better in six months than we are today. And then we need to improve and change constantly. Imagine this. You're working in a project, you've been doing that for 12 months, one year. Today is the last day of the project. Today you will hand it over to the customer. Today you will show the result, and then you will close it down. Move on to new challenges. This project is not uploaded in some cloud. The whole project is at the office. And in the morning when you go to the office, you see this. There is no office. And there is no project. The product is gone. Luckily, the customer says, we understand. It's a crisis. 
but please do the project again. We need it. Please do it again. And we need your estimator, of course. How long time would it take? It took 12 months first time. Now you will do exactly the same project once again. How many think it would take longer time? Second time. How many think it would take exactly the same time? It's the same project. I mean, come on. How many think it would take shorter time? Okay, shorter time is winning. How much shorter? 12 months? Do I have 11? 11? 10? 10? 10? 9? 9? 9? 8? 8? 7? 7? 6? 6? 6? We have 5? 5? 5? 5? Over here? 4? 4? 4? And 3? 3? 3? 2? Okay, 3 months. First time 12 months, second time 3 months. Why? Why would it go faster a second time? A learning experience. When we start a project, there are things we don't know. Things we have to learn. Actually, there are things we don't know that we don't know that we will learn. Can anyone come up with a word summarizing this? Things we don't know, things we don't know that we don't know. One word, anyone? Anyone? Yes. Unknown, yeah. Bottleneck, yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Uh, bottleneck, yeah. So, what are you saying? If, you, if we should do the project the first time and you want to do it shorter than 12 months, should we focus on identifying our bottlenecks? Is that what you're saying? You can nod, if you can, yeah, if would help me. You know. <laughs> okay, so identifying bottlenecks would help us make the product shorter because then we might find the things we don't know and the things we don't know that we don't know earlier. So how should we do this? How should we find the bottlenecks? We need a recipe for success, of course. What's the first point, point on that? Start where you are. Oh, come on, that's obvious, right? Do I even have to mention that? Start where you are. Who doesn't? Who doesn't start where you are? We do. We do. I give an example. Now we're doing Scrum. You're Scrum Master, you product owner, you are the team. Here's the backlog, here's the sprint backlog. You will work in a sprint, two weeks, few, two weeks. After the two weeks, you will have a sprint review, sprint retrospective. Oh, did I tell you about the, the burn down shot? Yeah, you need to track your progress. Yeah, here, take it, take it, go, go, start. What are you waiting for? If that's agile, I hate it. This is the same thing as asking people to change five things in their appearance without telling them why. You are sliding back. Sliding back. So why can't we just take it step by step? Try something, experiment, one step at a time. Inspect and then adapt. For some reason, we always want to do this as a revolution. Yeah, no more waterfall, agile. You know, in a revolution, revolution, always something we don't like, something we want to escape from, and that's the waterfall. The waterfall methodology. We don't want it because we want to be agile instead. And in every revolution, you have these freedom fighters. I call them religious project managers. 
probably working as a project manager for 10, 15, 20 years. And then someone showed them Agile. Actually, they showed them Scrum, but they call it Agile. And two days later, they are Scrum Masters, and I go around with this Scrum Bible and preach Agile. You have to work Agile, it's so cool. Oh, you don't want that waterfall. No, 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 stop doing that. Agile is so good. And after a while, they realized that a lot of Scrum Masters going around, they're not really unique. I better change my title. Something with Agile. Yeah, Agile Coach. So now my Agile Coach, going around with my Bible, preaching Scrum, preaching Agile. Super. You know, after each revolution, in the morning, the sun goes up over the, over the city. There's blood on the street, dead bodies, a couple of yellow stickers in the corner. They are tiny, so probably tiny tasks. No one really knows if they're important or not, but they are there, you know. The only movement you see is a guy coming and cleaning the streets. I've been that guy too many times. Coming into projects where we have done this transition into Agile, but we didn't really get why. What was the purpose? What would we actually try to change? And then just redo it again. Take it step by step. So why do we have to do it as a revolution? Why can't we just do it as an evolution? Learning something, experiment. Read all the books, attend all the conferences, go all the courses, learn the rules, and then break them. Cheat as much as you can, steal things with pride. Just experiment and learn. What is Agile? How can we use it? There is no scrum police coming and get you if you would do that. Okay, so start where you are. So how do you do that? How do you start where you are? I use these two questions to start where I am. So I usually say to, to agile coaches, don't start coaching in the first three months. Just go around, check. Talk to the teams, talk to people, know what's happening. Find out what is good and what do we want to improve. Interview people, finding out. This is like uh, basketball, actually. So what is the most valuable thing for a basketball player? Actually, a basketball team. It's a round thing, yeah, the ball, yeah. Why is it the most valuable thing? You, you can score, and if you score a lot, you win the game, right? If you win the game, and you win more games, you can win the cup. And when you win the cup, you get money from sponsors, from audience coming and look at you. And you can continue playing basketball because that's the most fun thing in the whole wide world, at least to a basketball player. So you have this most valuable thing in your hand and you're facing the opponent. What do you do? Have it like this in front of you? No, because the opponent will take the ball, right? Pretty easy. So you stand with your whole body between the opponent and the ball. You keep on this side. Actually, you wave over here, so this leg here, closest to the ball, that's rooted right down in the ground. And this other leg is trying to find an improvement, a better situation, something to change. And then you do, and you're swift. You have learned something, and you're protected with this leg now and find a new way. And that's what we're doing. In the change, we need to know, hey, what are we changing here? And what should we protect? 
We want to protect what's good, right? And now you know where I work. Yeah, you do. So when you've done these questions, this is a great exercise. This exercise will take all from one hour to two weeks, but just do it. You ask this question, and this can be for any team. It can be a management team, it can be a product, product owner's team, it can be a developer team, anyone. What do we want to achieve? What problems do we want to solve? What are we missing today? Those three questions are just to get the discussion going. What is success for us? What's that failure? Our failure, how does it look? Write it down, agree and write it down. How do we measure so that we know that we have reached our success or not? Who needs our services and what are they trying to achieve? How can we make the customer awesome? So write it down and make it to your vision. I did this with our team a couple of years ago. This team were building a camera app for mobile phones. The exercise took around three, four hours. And pretty early, we, we moved from focusing on technical stuff, which is the camera, into the user of this technical stuff. So this camera team put this division down. We will not make the world's best camera. We will make the user the world's best photographer. Wow, these were engineers, you know. They just moved and focused on, okay, there's the user. How can we help the user become the world's best photographer? And the thing is, for everything, every idea, everything come up, we could just look at this and say, okay, will it help the user become the world's best photographer? If we couldn't say yes, then it's a no. And then we shouldn't do it. If it was yes, Next question, why? Why would it help the user to become world's best photographer? And when we reason around that and understand why it was, we just agreed and everyone understand. Okay, this is why we do it. Second step, show and tell. Show what you do. Don't be afraid of that. Show everything, you know? The goal. What is the goal? We want 20% less lead time. Okay, that's the goal. We want 30% better quality. Yep, that's the goal. We want to do 50 features. Huh? That's the goal. Show it. Draw a line. Write it. And then show your progress. Where are we? When can we celebrate? Show your progress. Everyone does that, right? But why? Mostly internally, it's really great to identify bottlenecks. If we can see what's happening, can see where we, where we work to get blocked. For what reason? Why? For how long? Externally, it's a communication tool. Because we don't really want to question, when are you done? The answer to that question is a guess. You have to guess, right? Because you don't really know. Instead of having a question, when are you done? We want to question, what have you done? Because that's fact. We can just show, yeah, this is done, this is working. And in that discussion, when you ask the question, you will get, yeah, and what's left? Yeah, and you get a feeling for what's left. Third thing to, to show and tell is your backlog. These sheep illustrate the backlog. <coughs> okay, so why do we need to show, show the backlog? Well, the backlog should not be in Excel sheet in someone's laptop. It should be visible for everyone. You, you need to change it when you need to. Don't wait for it. Don't have a meeting two weeks from now to change it. Change it when you need to and show it. So everyone understands. This is the prior. We have changed it because of these reasons. Two most common reasons for failing, at least to me, is that you don't understand your backlog. You don't understand the source of why you're doing things. 
What are things coming from into the backlog? Are they broken down? Is there a value to it? If you don't understand the backlog, it's very easy to fail when setting up Scrum or any other method. Understanding a backlog is really, really important. And the second thing is the leadership. Leading the change. If we're missing the leadership, it will never be in our, our, our culture. The change will just fade away. So we need leadership in our change, and we need to see it in the backlog. The thing is, tools that come, doesn't come with leadership. You need to have the leadership when you start implementing. But it doesn't include in the tools, in the methods. The third step, stop starting, start finishing. And now, the second exercise. And I want two volunteers. Two volunteers. Anyone, it's completely free, yeah? Welcome, come here. I need one more. I need one more with a mobile phone. Maybe you, because you have a mobile phone. So please, come. <clears throat> so, um, now we have we have three super important projects that we will do. The first one is some part of the alphabet, the 10 first, A to J. The second one is 1 to 10. And the third one is 1 to 10, Roman letters. This is super important for you. So you have to do them at the same time, parallel. So you will write them like this. A, one, one, B, two, two, and so on, right? Yes, here's the pens. And you will time, you will take time. So you have a stopwatch on your phone? Yes. So when he starts writing A, When he starts writing A, you will start the time. And when he's writing J, you will press lap for a lap time. A few seconds later, he will write 10, and you will press lap. And a few seconds later, he will run a, write an X. And then you can stop it. So I want the times here, here, and here. OK? Are you ready? Are you ready? No, no. I want you to write A, 1, 1, B, one, um, B, two, two, C, three, three. And you need to have the right color of the pen. It's super important for the project. <laughs> Otherwise, you can never deliver it. So it's, it has to be the right color. And you have to do it at the same time now, because it's everyone, every project here is super important. So please do it at the same time. OK? Ready, set. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to ask you if you know the alphabet, but I just... Yeah, and this is a good exercise.
¿vale? No, ok, Latam. Latam. Capitán Lap. Capitán Lap. I can stop. I can stop. Thank you. How was that? How does it, did it feel? Why? Many different parameters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The alphabet, yeah, the alphabet could be some difficult, but I also listen into you and say maybe C D E F G, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, nine, you know, and yeah, so it's yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. This pen, what do they represent in our real life? Yeah, different tasks, different tools, different things we need to do. Yeah. So, can we get the times? I can write here. So you can wait here. Two minutes. Two minutes and four. Forty. Uh, four. Fifty. And fifty-six. Okay. So. Yeah. Two. Two forty-four. Two fifty. Two fifty-six. Okay. We will do it once again. <laughs> We will do it once again, but this time you will do it in another order. So you will write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J. You will write one, two, three, four, five, six, six, ten, and ten. Here you are. Are you ready? Best. Uh, End result, end result should be exactly the same. You just write like this now, in this order here. Okay? Are you ready? I'm super ready. Are you ready? You can remove your time. So yeah, super. Okay. Starting. One, two, three. Get left on? Oh, left on, left on. Okay, okay, done, done, stop, stop. Okay. How did it feel? How did it feel? Yeah. This was the second time you did this project. Yeah. Twelve months, three months, remember? Twelve months? Yeah. yeah. I think it's the same. No, but maybe you learned something here and you applied it here. Yeah. <clears throat> so the times. Eleven seconds. And then you said twenty two fifty six. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you must sit down. So it's the same result, right? The end result is exactly the same. When we deliver this project, it was exactly the same. But here, this project here took two minutes forty-four seconds. 
and this took 11 seconds. Wow, <laughs> what an improvement, right? You may steal it. Please steal it. <laughs> yeah, it is actually a good exercise because you realize that it's quite fast. When you focus on one thing, it, we can do it really fast. And the quality is better as well, I would say. And we don't mix the colors and the, that parameter is, is removed. So, over here, it's easy to say that, okay, you're working on 40% uh, on project A and 20% on project B and 20% on project C. Oh, good. Then you can take project D and E as well because you have 20% left. Pushing on to people, try to utilize people 100%. What will happen? when we utilize people 100%. Yeah, you get stuck. Actually, you won't be able to answer any questions. You won't be able to learn anything, listen to customers, no way. There's no chance that you will be able to change anything because you will be totally occupied 100% all the time. Yeah, it has. This is what happens, and this is what it looks like. It doesn't matter how fast that donkey runs, because those packages will never be delivered. What should we do? Replace the donkey? A heavy one? A stronger one? What should we do? Yeah, well, we should remove some packages yeah of course which ones these ones to remove <laughs> yeah which one exactly so the one we should keep is the most valuable ones right we need to remove the other ones sometimes this is me and sometimes it's you sometimes it's our team just pushing on too hard and whoops and when someone hits the wall it's so easy to say remove everything go home take a break and we also remove the good things the basketball we also remove those good things maybe we should just take one package at a time and lower the donkey so we can stand again removing everything at once will break the legs of the donkey and then we need to remove the donkey replace him so how do you do this with your teams how do you actually do this and prevent it from happening i just summarize it at least at this leave some space for miracles i tried this several years ago Actually, there was a team that uh, asked me to do it. We had a huge challenge in front of us. And they said, please, Roger, can we have two days a week with no meetings? No stand-ups, no management meeting, no weekly meetings, nothing. Sure, let's try it. You can come in whenever you want, and you can leave whenever you want that day. Because we have the weekly goal, we know what we should do. So we tried that and have two days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, with no meetings. And productivity went whew, like this. And you know, the average time we worked those days per person was seven hours and 44 minutes. We didn't even work eight hours. Still, we produced almost four times more. 
That's because we remove the meetings. We remove the things that pushed us. Okay, next thing. Let's see the time. Okay, measure and manage your performance. This is Baldo in Liseberg, Gothenburg. When you stand in line in Baldo, there's a sign. It says 30 minutes. It means in 30 minutes, it's you. In 30 minutes, your turn. How do they know? Well, they have measured, right? Yeah, they know how many trains they have, they know how many people goes on the trains, they know how long time one ride takes. So they have measured and they know that if you stand here, it's 30 minutes until it's you. Okay, why can't we do that? What if we could say that in our backlog? If you put it on top, you will get it in two weeks. You put it down here, five weeks, eight weeks. What would happen if we could do that? The discussion wouldn't be about estimates. Is it four or six days? Four or six days? Okay. The discussion would be about business and our business values. What is most important here? You need it in two weeks. We can get it in five weeks. Where should we put it? The discussion is more about business rather than having estimates. So how can you do that? Start measuring. Measuring your performance. How fast you're working. Measure your throughput. How many things do you deliver every week? How many things can you sign off every week? And then put some sizes on the work. Use t-shirt sizes, but don't put any values on them. Take the top of your backlog, things to do list, take it, go through it, specify it, analyze it, put it on a table and put the smallest thing on the top. Just compare. Take the two, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, and go through them all. And put them on the table. So you have the small ones on top and you have the biggest one at the bottom. And then draw a line. These are small ones and these are large ones. And here are medium ones. But don't put any times. Don't say a small one is two days because you don't know. Measure it and find out. After some time, you've done, done a couple of tasks. You've done eight small ones. The average was two days. Three medium ones for four days. Two large ones, average 25 days. What can we do with this data? Exactly, nothing. <laughs> we can't do anything because we need to continue working to get some more. Now we have done 120 small tasks. If you come to me and say, Ray Roger, can you do this for me? Can you put it in your backlog? Sure, I'll let the team take a look at it, analyze it, break it down. And we say, yeah, I think it's three small ones. And we can actually do those three at the same time. We have done this guess 120 times. Do you trust me? Well, do you? This is one way of building trust into your teams, into your deliveries, showing your performance. Of course, sometimes shit happens. Now it stops, so they have to walk down from Baldo. Yeah, shit happens. But we can build as much trust as we can by showing our average progress. Okay, so why are we here? I just wanna check so we answer the questions. Is there actually a recipe for success?
depends on how you define success. But yes, I would say there is a recipe for success. Of course there is. So we said that that's done. Okay. Why do teams and companies fail when implementing new way of working? Well, first of all, the change itself. We don't realize it's a lifetime commitment. We think it's a time-bound exercise, like the diet, but it's not. Second time, second thing, the backlog. Learn the backlog. Understand how it's built up. Where does it come from? Where's the value? How do we make the customer awesome through our backlog? The leadership. You need a leadership to drive the change. I would say that's done. How do you convince someone from hating a mindset to actually try working with it? Have I explained that? Have I said that? Have I told that? No? No? What's the answer? <laughs> I haven't told you that, but I have actually shown you. This recipe for success is actually called Kanban. You see, I've been talking about Kanban for 45 minutes without mentioning the word Kanban. And that was exactly what I did with this French manager. Two months after our conversation, we had a conference. And I was there to speak about some software quality, something, something. But I thought, huh, now we talk about Agile. So I went through the whole Agile manifesto in 30 minutes. Every single bit of it. Show it, describe it. Try to inspire and show why I think we should do this. But I didn't mention the word Agile one single time. And one month later, we started our first sprint. Experimenting, trying to build something. Okay, that's done. Yeah. You know, I want to finish things. I want to make them done. Okay. When is it really good time to work agile and when is it not? I haven't tell you that, but um, we have a break soon. So let's take the break. Have some uh, some food or what is it, Karina? No, she's not here. Okay, skip the food. You know what? I cheating, and I do it like this. So waterfall. When is a really good time to use waterfall? And when is a really good time to use agile? The payoff goes on this axis. That's when we as producers win, when we get paid. And the success goes on other. That's when our customer wins, when we give something to the customer, help the customer. So down here, we just give. We want to be like here. So we help the customer and we get something for it. Down here, uh, okay, beautiful. Explore, yeah, you can read it almost. Explore. This is typically a startup. They could also be a big company, actually. Sometimes we need to explore new things. So, down here, we have a small chance of a big payoff. Small chance of a big payoff. Problem is unknown, the solution is unknown. We're just working, we try experiments. Throw out from a win through the window, does it fly? No, okay, try something else. Does it fly? Almost, save something. Does it fly? Continuous, like that, experimenting. There's no really method, you know. Or should we call that method? Just explore. If you're lucky, we build something 
that a customer likes and wants to pay for. And then we can start expanding. But over here, these bottlenecks appear suddenly. And we have a customer wanting something. The problem is sort of known now, but the solution is still unknown. Scrum is working perfectly here, because we have a customer. That's the most important thing in Scrum, because the customer can give us feedback if we just show and ask for it and cooperate with our customer. So Scrum is working really good there. Now, when growth becomes routine, we're going into extract. Now, all of a sudden, we have a business model. If we put in one euro, we got three euros out. And we know why. Now we have a big chance of a small payoff. It's quite easy for us to make a small amount of money. The solution and the problem are both relatively known at this stage. And here works wonderful, really good, because now we can use our experience to make a plan and go ahead. What happens, happens if we use waterfall when we explore? Okay, now I should explore here, uh, try something new. Um, we have your six month plan. Hmm, six months. I don't even know what I have to do tomorrow. Six months. Sorry, let's try uh, safe. We have your three month plan. Three months, I don't even know what to do tomorrow. Okay, your sprint goal for the next two weeks. Two weeks, I don't even know what to do tomorrow. Down here, we're just exploring. It's difficult to have plans, difficult to you know, plan the work with a backlog, with a customer and all those things. You just need to explore. Typically, it's really good to just have it as a silo in a company. We explore in this, learn, try, and then pick it up if it's working and move on. Of course, we can use waterfall when we expand. We just need to have the plans a little bit shorter. We need to have some more change management meetings. But that could work. And we can use Scrum, of course, when extracting. It goes on both ends, right? But when we explore, it's difficult to make these plans, to make this you know, commitment to something. This is a model of, uh, from Ken Peck. Ken Peck is one of the authors of the Agile Manifesto. And I also added something from a guy called Steve Blank, which is an entrepreneur and quite connected to a lean startup. Okay, so now I just have to back here, ruin my plan. Okay, I will do it like this so you can follow what I'm talking about. Changes are not diet programs, right? It's not, it's lifetime commitment. Identify your bottlenecks, try to find what is good and what can we improve. Make the change count. And implementing Agile is not a goal, by the way. Implementing Scrum is not a goal. It's just something we do on the way to our real goal. So you need to state that. Show your real goal. Show your progress. Show your backlog. Visualize everything. And don't utilize people to 100%. Because we will break them. You need to have some, some space in between here. Manage your flow. Stop measuring, just see how much do we deliver. And please, 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 don't make it into a revolution. You don't need a revolution, right? We need an evolution. Read all the books, attend all the conferences, go to courses, learn the rules, and then break them. Cheat as much as you can, steal things with pride. Experiment and learn. 
implement an agile way of working using an agile way of thinking. And this is me if you zoom in really. Okay, thank you for coming tonight.